Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. Well, uh, hopefully we can resolve that little audio issue we were having because Dr. Ramchan is now again on the line. He sat in the capacity as Foreign Affairs Minister. He's now an opposition MP, uh, still in the parliament representing the UNC. Uh, but Dr. Ramchan, from where you sit, what, you know, D Dennis Moses has said, that I'm going to quote the front page, TNT is not bound by the Rio Treaty. I just read excerpts of what exactly the treaty was. What do you make of all of this? Interview and I, read it, I read his um, speech um, in, in, that he made in the Senate. Um, firstly, that statement that he made would have been a statement I'm sure was approved by the Prime Minister. So that what he said out there is in consideration an official position of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, you cannot have joined a, a treaty or signed a treaty and then say that you are you want you you are accept you are adopting exceptions to the treaty. You know, you, you I don't think you can do that. And this is exactly what he is saying. That look, yeah, we are part of the treaty, but we are adopting an independent um, position on, on on these issues. I, I understand when you say you abstain, but then when the vote is taken and uh, there is a con consensus or there is. Um, you know, that the, the vote has been taken and approved by the majority, then I think that um, you are part of it. And uh, it's either now you say, look, I don't want to be part of this treaty again, and I revoke my, my, my uh, signatures and so on to the treaty, but I don't think that you can, you can just um, behave like this and, and endanger the trust that um, the world has in you with other treaties that you have signed, as well as the integrity of, of the nation of Trinidad and, and Tobago as a country um, in international affairs. And I think that that is a dangerous thing that is, is coming, coming true in what um, he's saying. Now, this is a very muddled affair, very, very muddled affair, in that, um, you know, first we had denials by the, the government about who and who was not on the trip, and then, you know, the pre presentation of the list of persons at, at the airport um, caused another um, furor, and um, it is not. Um, it, it also shows, that going back, that the foreign minister failed miserably. Forget the minister of national security for a moment. The foreign minister failed miserably in even knowing who were the persons who were um, named um, in this treaty that were not supposed to be or on whom sanctions had been placed. And I think that was that, that's a, a dereliction of duty. But what is even more more critical now is that. Having um, discussed with the American ambassador the situation and coming out and telling the population all is, is well, there are no issues and what have you and so on, here we come again and the, the, we are muddying the waters again with um, one of our important allies. And I think that you, know, you, you cannot have this kind of, um, of foreign policy uh, statement being, being, being made. I, I don't think that the government is thinking through very carefully. Um, what are all the ramifications of adopting this kind of, of, of position? Because as I said, I see this in a, a much wider context, not just of this treaty, but, you know, how do people trust us as, as, a, as a country with respect to other treaties that we have also signed? How do you, you know, when you talk about the government's handling of this, and I do have to ask, the government has accused the opposition of basically lobbying for sanctions by the U.S. Now, looking at this and where you, you have, the government has said that it has adopted a non-interventionist approach. It recognizes President Maduro because of the fact that he is the president of Venezuela. They do not recognize uh, the Guaido because of the fact that legally, uh, according to the laws of the land, that is the president of the nation. You have, uh, two, you have two separate issues here. Mm -hmm. um, if the government wishes as they have done to, to, to adopt that position, they adopt it. But, the, but the, what about the matter of the sanction? It, as party to the treaty, are you going to um, uh, uphold the sanctions that have been uh, agreed upon? And I don't think the government can run from that as they are trying, trying to run from it. The, the government is trying to justify a position that has, it has taken, which is now finding it increasingly difficult to defend, especially where its relationship with its major ally is, is being affected. And I, and I see that as, as dangerous, as I said. It's not just about Trinidad and Tobago and um, Venezuela and the U.S. It's about Trinidad and Tobago and the wider world now in terms of how we are perceived um, with, this, with this kind of, um, of, of positions we are, we are adopting. Now, also looking at the fact that uh, the, the conversation on sanctions, I see that some independent commentators are saying that that is irrelevant uh, because countries throughout the globe continue to do business with Venezuela and they do not face sanctions and that we are in no risk of facing sanctions on this discussion. 
Well, the, the, the thing is that um, it's up to the countries um, who want to impose sanctions. That's, the, that, that's their, their prerogative. If the U.S. Um, wants to impose sanctions more on Iran, for example, or pushing through gas, it, that's up to, up to um, the U.S. If the U.S. wants to impose sanctions upon Trinidad and Tobago, because it finds that um, you know Trinidad and Tobago is violating the treaty, or, or Trinidad, what Trinidad and Tobago is, is doing is not consistent with, um, with what um, their policies are, then they, they are free to do so. Um, all, all these are matters that we, we still wait to see unfold. But the reality is that I think Trinidad and Tobago did take a, a, a defensive position um, when they met with, the, with Mr. Mondello, the ambassador, and indicated that they were not going to provide any space for the ships from Iran and so on, and they, they were going to be very careful. And I thought that um, at that point in time, um, they were trying to correct uh, the, the positions that they had taken. But now we have a, a deepening of, of, of the... the the, or hardening of, of the, the positions that Trinidad and Tobago is taking. And they are putting up, you know, what they consider to be a defense through the voice of Mr. Mr. Moses. For the now, first time, in fact, Mr. Moses is speaking. Now, you know, looking at at how this entire matter is going to be resolved, are we, make, are we, are we basically, is it much to do about nothing? Because after all of this and the conversations were revealed, uh, the Minister of National Security and the Prime Minister and the U.S. Ambassador held meetings of which uh, all parties said it was a cordial discussion. So is that the end of this? Well, you know, it could be the end of it, but I don't think it's going to be the end of it because um, the, the U.S. did develop a, a certain view. They did two things. One. Uh, Mr. Mandelo came out openly and said he, re he reminded uh, Mr. Young about the, the Rio Treaty. And then they sent a diplomatic note as far as I understand it, naming the, the people who were sanctioned and found. So that the U.S. did not take it lightly, in my view. They, they took what were the initial steps um, to bring it to the attention of um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And when a country chooses to do that by diplomatic note, I, I consider that to be that, you know, a, a very serious step. Your closing comments on this matter. Because in the end, um, I see that some commentators, I'm going to read from an article here. Uh, South Africa has continued to hold strong bilateral agreements with Venezuela. They do not have sanctions by the U.S. Aruba continues to import. And this is, as you're right, a very muddled issue. It started with, started with a visit, then somehow became about the oil deal, then came about diplomatic relations. So it's a domino effect uh, where the narrative has changed so many times. So I think that the gaps in the information stream clearly is what created the, the conflict in people's minds. But the narrative, the narrative has kept changing because the government has not been upfront with all the information, and then also the manner in which different persons in the government were denying the existence of the um, documentation, and they didn't know, and this one shouldn't know, and so on. And I think the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, and the right eye was not seeing what the left eye was seeing. I think I think that is where a lot of the confusion has taken place. But that aside, I think we ought to be very, very careful how we deal um, with the perceptions of the world with respect to how we stand on not just this treaty, but any treaty. But if, your, if your government were in power, Dr. Ramachan, who would you recognize as, what would you do? If you have, have a situation... We, we have done that already through the political leader. And she has, has said clearly that, um, you know, she has recognized um, Mr. Guaido. So there's a clear position that the... UNC has taken, and that is the difference in this matter. You know, the UNC is prepared to take a clear position, which, which, which we have taken, but, uh, but also to protect our relationship with our major allies. So is it pandering to the U.S.? Let me ask. The government has said that they recognize the legitimate government. Is, and the prime minister has said in previous interviews that this, we are a sovereign nation, which we are, and we understand also that we may be a small player but in our right to independence and our right to determine the course of our country, and we can say the most prophetic things about it and poetic Agreed. things about it. Agreed. But is it simply a fear, or are we are so afraid of Big Brother that we are pandering to the U.S. No. Uh, and pressure from the U.S.? I don't think I don't think we are afraid of the U.S., but I think that we in, we need to engage, like Mr. Daly and Mr. Dumas said, in critical dialogue. And when I say critical dialogue, not just after the fact, but. Um, before um, these kinds of situations e emerge. And I think that is where Mr. Moses has failed miserably as, as a foreign minister. And he left a space for Mr. Young um, to, to take over what basically was foreign ministry um, uh, responsibilities. And um, in, in that whole process, the thing got, thing got muddled, which shows 
that um, you know they are incompetent people in, in in the government who are not really capable of dealing with um, matters as sensitive as this. This is why the prime minister then had to try to um, hold a meeting and to to, to soften the, the 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 effects and what have you. But you know the damage, whatever damage is there, the damage has been done. Sure, Dr. Ramjan, I do want to thank you very much for taking the time this morning uh, for giving us your opinion on this matter. You sat in the capacity as Foreign Affairs Minister when your government was in power, uh, and you shared your thoughts. We take a short break. When we come back, more and more nationals continue to arrive in this country. We're going to introduce you to one set of crew members, all from Trinidad and Tobago nationals, who are currently uh, port, uh, and out the, on the port of Jamaica, and they're waiting permission to arrive. They're part of the Norwegian Cruise Line. Stay with us.